Hey up everybody and welcome back. Well, still here, still healthy, everything looking good in that respect. Um, still getting a continuous stream of new subscribers so thank you and welcome to all of them. Um, I've started getting a few emails from people as well, uh, which is nice. Seem to be stirring up some interest amongst the uh, older viewers like myself and uh, getting them to drag things out of sheds and start working again, which is really good. So, it's Wednesday. Uh, spring must be here because Steam Shop Dave is back. But uh, it's still a bit chilly. It's supposed to be 28 on Saturday night. Possibility of snow. Anyway, um, this week's video is going to be very much like last week's. I'm just going to see what I can manage to get done and uh, video it. We're going to continue with the saddle and uh, then see what else we can do because as I say we're getting so close now really I'm about ready to just pull the engine out and get this strip ready for paint and we've got to rebuild the engine. So let me think, is there anything else I can say? Uh, no, don't think so. There was something and of course it's completely gone out of my mind. So who knows what it was. Anyway, let's um, pull the bits of the saddle out and we'll carry on from where we left off last week. All right, it came to me just as I was turning the camera off. Um, a couple of people mentioned in the comments that I should watch Alan Milliard. Well, I had been watching his videos and he's, if you don't know him, Alan Milliard builds bikes that make my stuff look like wooden carts. I mean, you want a six cylinder engine? Well, you just get two four cylinder ones and a hacksaw and uh, you've got a six cylinder or a V-twin Vela set or, uh, well, you name it. He's, he's made some of the most amazing things and they always look factory built, but the really amazing thing uh, is I saw a video of him recently where one of these people who goes around YouTube is interviewing them, was talking to him. He's got, his shed is a sort of slightly longer than average single car garage, but it's no size at all. And the chap said to him, so, you know, you do all this work, what sort of tools do you have? And he turns around and says, these are my tools. And the camera pans and there's like a pegboard on the wall with a dozen spanners, some hammers, screwdrivers, and then he says, and lots of files. And he opens the drawer and there's lots of files. So for our more pedantic viewers, perhaps you should go to Alan Milliard and uh, see the most spectacular engineering work done with hand tools. And just as an example, one of the bikes he's built, he's actually built several of them. You know the sort of laid down Honda single cylinder four strokes, 90cc? He turns them into V-twins. He gets another cylinder and he machines everything in V-twins. So he started doing videos uh, where he actually shows the work, which he didn't used to do before. And today I was watching one where he did the crank, made the single crank into a twin piston crank. And you think, okay, he's gonna lighten the, uh, the flywheel webs. I wonder what he's gonna do that with. So you go out in your, his garden, he puts his foot on it to hold it down and he uses an angle grinder with a cutting disc and then a file. The man's a genius. Uh, so that's Alan Milliard watching. Now let's do the saddle. Right, so where we left off last week, I just started to put this little lip round here. So I've finished welding that on. Now what we've got to do at the back end here, of course, is slightly different because I've got to make it go down. So it's got to follow this curve. If I just put it on at an angle so it sort of was flat, it would end at right angles to this. That would end up sticking out because it would be right angles to that. So it would stick out. And when you pull the cloth down, it would look strange. So it's actually got to go vertically here. So it isn't at a right angle. So what we're going to do is uh, stick a bit of weight on there. So it doesn't roll about. And then we've got a long piece of cardboard. Good old cardboard. Actually, I should turn this round to show you. Let me make sure we're still right. Okay, so what we're going to do, you see this is, is vertical, same as the sides are. Put the pen down, there it is. So, what we're going to do, we'll do it from this side where I've got a square end. 
So we're going to put that there. And we're going to go around I should have something to hold this here shouldn't I some more of those big pieces of scrap but we'll manage you know we'll manage right so what I'm going to do now, the little delays while I keep going back and looking to make sure is, we're going to mark half an inch down from there and cut that piece out with that curve. Then when I put it on there, it'll be right. So let me mark it and I'll cut the strip out and I'll show you that it works. Right, so there it is, cut out, stuck on, and as you can see, it goes straight down even at the back it doesn't stick out it goes straight down so let me go and transfer this template to some 16th aluminium and I'll cut it out and then we'll see about welding it right now I know of late I've been guilty of Blue Peter syndrome uh, which was a children's program I think it's still going with the uh, you know here's one I made earlier and I know a lot of you like to see the actual work, so I'm going to cut it out on the bandsaw. There's the mark. I'm doing it in two pieces, otherwise I would have had to cut a great big swath out to get the curve, and I don't like to waste material. So I'm going to cut it this way. Here's a little something about bandsaws. As I was looking at, for a metal cutting bandsaw, I saw in the catalogues, if I, you look at new ones, I'd see two bandsaws identical spec except one runs slower and it was classed as a metal cutting one and the other one ran faster and it was a woodworking one and the price difference was unbelievable so one of my friends is a high-end woodworker one of our group and he refurbishes stuff so I told him to keep an eye out for a nice big strong this is cast aluminium the whole thing bandsaw and I've got a DC motor on it with a controller that regulates the uh, the torque and everything. And it's, you know, I mean, much cheaper. If any of you don't believe me, you go and look in a catalogue. All right, cover your ears. Now isn't that better than a hacksaw or even a jigsaw? Alright, let's go and see what's what. Now I've transferred the curves, the curved pieces of uh, cardboard to some alloy. I've done it in two pieces just because the big curve, if I'd have cut it out, I'd have wasted a big chunk of, thing, of uh, alloy. So I cut one and cut one underneath. Then what I've started doing is bending it. So, fits on there, and it's going to go around there like that. So, I'll go and tack that, and we'll weld it, and then when that's all the way around, what I'm going to do here is cut a little piece out to go drop it down onto the tube. So, let me go and uh, get these tacked on, and we'll, well, I'll go and get them welded on, and then we can look at where the rubber snubbers are going to go, and a piece for here and also I've noticed actually that the um, let's see if I've got you still in yep you know I was gonna make a couple of knee pieces a couple of L's 
to go onto the rear suspension unit tops. Well, the rear suspension units are right back here. You'll see when I put it on the frame. But here is where the gusset is on the top tubes of the frame. So what I might do is drill through them, sleeve them, and put a bolt through and mount it, make the mountings forward here. So anyway, let me go and weld these pieces onto there. Now I've welded the edge on and I'll just give it a quick uh, sand round to take the sort of round that off for the leather to go over. So there you can see this end, I think. Yep, and if I put it that way, you should be able to see that it comes down. So the next thing I'm gonna do is mark a little piece here so it sits down on the main frame tube. So let's do that. Actually, let me pull you back a little bit here because you can see two things. Right, I'm going to take a little piece out here for where it goes over there and that'll drop that front end down the full half inch. But you see here, I can't really put the L's on there, but I probably could here. Unless I think of some other way of doing it. But anyway, let me take this little notch out so we can sit this down. I've taken that little bit out the front and you can see now that's dropped it down level with there. And I realise the little rubber snubbers I've got aren't tall enough. So let's have a... While I'm thinking about that, let's think about the... Uh, well, I'm not thinking about it. I've got to reorder them. Let's put the form and the cover on and see what that looks like. Now it's starting to look something like. I've actually put some thin form in there. Did I tell you this last video? I don't know. Putting them together like this is uh, really confusing. I put a piece of thin form in there and that's taken away those half holes where I cut through. Now what I found though is I'm going to need to put a little piece in the back here. So I found some more form let me cut a little bit. Oh, I haven't got the big knife. I can't do that. We'll have to do that another time. All right. So that's looking pretty good. When that gets pulled down nice and tight, all the way around, a little bit more light form around the sides to pad it out. That's going to be pretty good. Okay, let's have a look at the way we're going to hook this under the front. Now what I'm going to do is have a piece of eighth to make it good and sturdy. I'm going to make something, a bracket that will uh, weld onto the front of there and we'll just go under that. See, so that'll go under that, which is cost the way BSA saddles are, but they have a little rod thing. So that'll hook under there and then it'll drop on at the back. Talking away and you can't see what I'm talking about. Now you can. So it's going to hook on there and then drop down and be bolted at the back. I think that will work fine. As I say, what I'm going to do is not just drill a hole through there, but I'll drill a half inch hole through and I'll put a piece of half inch, well, yeah, because I've got some half inch tube and that will give me a 3 8 bolt because it's a half inch with 16 inch walls. So that will give me 3 8 and I can just put a bolt through there, one of those nice mushroom ones, it'll look fine. Okay, let me uh, find some eighth. Right. So, this is the piece we're going to use. That goes under there, and that's going to fasten onto there. So let me just, what I'm going to do is drill a hole through the seat base, put a bolt in to hold it and then weld it. So I'm going to put a hole about three and a half inches down. Got my centre line there. So about, well, not about. Did I say three and a half? Seems a little excessive, don't you think? Oh yes, it's got to go to here, doesn't it? It's got to go to there. Yeah, three and a half. Measurement challenged. It's a wonder I ever get anything made, isn't it? So, three and a half from there is there. I'll tell you what, rebuilding this uh, 
fight with Jensen has reminded me how long things take. I keep saying, oh, we'll go out today, we'll do this, that and the other, and then, you know, it's not as if we're doing it slowly or anything, but it's, uh, we get half of it done. Right, so what I'll do now is, well, I need three hands again. Right, let me go and drill another hole. Now then, got that bolted on, so that is going to go under there, and then that's going to go on there and get bolted down, and then we're fine. So that's bolted in place, but I'm going to weld it on, so let me go and weld it. So there it is, welded on. It's actually still a bit warm. So that goes under there like that, and there we are. Pull it up. All right. Um, got to be able to see about some of the rubber snubbers and cut a bit of foam. So let's uh, let's cut the foam and put the uh, seat cover back on next. Belay that last order about uh, seat foam. We're going to do the base because I've had to rethink it. You know, I was going to go through here, put a knee on the back. Well suddenly struck me when you did an extension of the the actual tube thickness there isn't really enough room to put a half inch hole through there put a piece of tube in so I came up with a cunning plan right now what we're going to do is I've cut some pieces of quarter inch alloy and they're going to be welded on there like thus then that one and that one are going to be drilled and tapped to 5 16th. Now this is quarter inch, the base is eighth, so that's going to give me three eighths of thread. Right? Then when they're on there like that, we'll go back to the bike, what we're going to do here is make a piece, it'll be come up a little bit, it's going to go across there, and they're going to, those three pieces, where are we? Three are going to sit on there. Two of them bolted one just as a center support now with the base being eighth with it having a nice support here because the saddle comes right up to here somewhere and with it being supported at the front I might put a couple of little rubber bumpers on I don't know but I think that'll be more than sufficient so let me get welding some aluminium or aluminium alloy or aluminum or any one of any number of terms that I don't want you to get worried about that's the pieces welded on so these two I've got to drill so what I'm going to do is drill them to the tapping size and then when I've got the cross piece on we'll put this on we'll use that as a guide to mark the cross piece and then I can drill the cross piece to 5 16 so let's measure up for the cross piece now I set the uh, the base of the saddle on there I've got it on a couple of little bits of cardboard just to give me some space for when the vinyl gets put on so the, the cross piece is going to be mounted on the top of the tube and it's going to go to there. So that is, where is it? there it is, to so the top of there is seven eighths. Now we've got a quarter inch, an eighth inch thickness. So seven eighths, that's three quarters. So we want this to stand up three quarters. So let's get our piece of flat, mark it up and do some bends. Now the cross piece is going to go over here, so we want, let's take from there, from eight and a half inches plus three quarters, three quarters, that's another one and a half, so that's ten inches 
plus we have that little bit of the bend right so 10 inches and it's making it out of eighth so let me mark it up and we'll see if we can bend it so there's our piece marked out let's see if we can bend it is a bit wide so I'll put my little bit of reducing angle there you can nest smaller and smaller pieces of angle into this so that the width gets smaller and smaller and then you can obviously bend pieces that don't stick out as far Hang on, let me go and get a square. Right, we'll just check that this is square here. Right, that's one side done. Fingers crossed, we'll do the other side. Only just reaches across this piece of angle. Should have a smaller piece in even. All right, let's take it over to the bike and uh, see if I did it right. Well, you won't believe it, but there is, these are near as damn it three quarters. So let's see if we got it right for there. Look at that, I got a little bit of a bend in it. But we can fix that. So that's going to go on there like that. And the saddle will go on top. So let me go and uh, beat blast the ends to clean them up. And then we'll come and I'll bring the welder over and we'll bronze them on. Right, so there's the cross piece bronzed on. And who spotted the deliberate measuring mistake? When I said that was 7 eighths less than eighth for the thickness of the base, I also had a quarter inch to take off for those pieces. So give yourself 10 points if you got it. All right, so that goes on there like that now. So now I'm gonna drill some holes in this from the other side, put it on where I want it, mark that, and then we can uh, bolt it down. Now I've got my tapping size holes put in there. So what I'm gonna do now is just Transfer that to that. And then I'll drill those out to 5 sixteenths. All right. Tap the holes. So that should go on there, under there like that. Should is always the operative word, as you know. And then that should go there oh. that 
工事にね。Thought the short one would be good, but I think what we'll have to use is not that one. Sorry, I'm still here. I'm just getting tools. Oh, come on. I guess tapped holes count as nuts. There we go. That one. I think I'm going to have to use a hex so I can put a socket on this. Yeah. There we go. Right, let's. Uh, I have been playing around with the Form. So let's put that on and see what's what. Now then, I've put a little bit extra form in there and I've also put a piece in the back. So now, it's, uh, it fits much better. Oh, and I put that thin form down the sides so you don't have the holes showing and making a strange pattern. I was looking for some little bulldog clip things to put on here, but I uh, couldn't find any. So at the moment it just has to stay on as it is. So there it is, let's go and put it on the bike. So there it is, let's uh, put these bolts in. Let me walk around the other side. You notice I've got a hex, so I was, I've got it on an extension. And before anybody says that's difficult to put on and off, you don't have to put it on and off. There's nothing under here. See, that one went straight in. There's nothing under here except the air filter, and you can take that off with the side panels off. All right, that one's tight. tight so the saddle's on and it won't come off when this is all nicely pulled down I think that will look fine I really do think that will look fine okie doke 25 past 6 that's nearly dinner time with Linda Jane so let's see if pull that down so I'm going to show you one last thing before we knock off. Today is May the 8th. It's snowing. It's going to be 25 degrees tonight. All right, let's see if we can get this saddle finished off. Okay. So you saw these two extra pieces here to thicken it up. The white, these are actually self-adhesive. 
So what I'm going to do is <laughs> stick them onto that side. Then here, as I say, to do away with these holes, these gaps, I've put some thin foam in. I have to put a little bit more in and I just have enough, I think, to do it. Bit that side, I have a shorter bit to put in this side. And then I have this extra piece in here which was cut off the end of there to round that and fill that end. So let me stuff these bits of uh, foam in and stick those bits on there and then we'll come back. Now then we'll see if we get this cover on. Let's see, I've stuck that to that. I'm sure there's a particular way to put these on as far as putting the uh, clips on you know start at one end or start in the middle or something but we will just uh, see what we can do One in the back here. Ow! That hurt. Okay, there's one on there. I think what we'll do is we'll work from the back. They didn't give me an awful lot of clips, but I think I've got some more of these. Get your finger out the way, Michael. So far, so good. Well, I think the snow is now turning to rain, by the way. It's about 34 degrees outside. Center line's gone off. Bugger! I know I've gone out of shot here because I've stood it up, but. No, I think I'll take those clips off and start again. Let me switch you off. Right, second attempt. I got the clips off without doing any damage. I'm going to start the front. <laughs> so we know we've centered on the on that. So we'll put one in there.
and we'll put I can pick up just one one in there now then what do you think to the back I think so we'll put a couple in the back and then work our way down the sides Actually, that looks better all together now. I've got that front piece done right. Okay. Now then, this is probably going to be a bit boring. So let me work my way around, not too bad, and then when I've got it all on, I will uh, bring it back. And there we go, got them all on around there, doesn't look too bad, I don't suppose I'll ever make an upholsterer, but let's put it on the bike. Right, so there it is on. Maybe need to put another couple of things in to pull tight in one or two places. But let's have a little look, see how this is with a side panel on. Get a more holistic view. Oh dear, it's something for people to complain about. The exhaust covers the bottom mounting. Tut, tut, tut. Oh, let's get me posh yellow ones out. Get it if I didn't use this type of fastener. Actually, is that? No wonder that won't go in, it's too big. So, who's sitting at home saying, I Told you so? Alright, who cares? We'll think of something. No, I can't get it enough for an angle. I'm not worried, and it's my bike. Okay, let me move you back. So there you go, that looks half decent. So I've, I think I've got some more of these clips. I'll put a couple more clips on, as I might. No, I'm going to say I thought I was lower on one side than the other, but no. So I think that is all going to look rather smart. Hmm. Okay, well, it's Saturday and I've still got to do the editing and stuff like that. So I'm going to call that it for this week. Uh, I think probably... I mean, I have that exhaust to do, but that's about the last thing I can think of. So, next week we'll be taking the engine out. Got to clean up the cases and everything because still have residual body filler from whatever that was for. Um, get the cases cleaned up and then we can build the engine. And while I'm doing that, 
I will paint the frame. So until next week, stay safe and enjoy yourselves.